Welcome back to The Tonight Show. Uh, well, everybody, making jokes during times like these is difficult, but it's my job to try and make people laugh and feel better, even if just for a little while. So with that in mind, let's tell some jokes. Last night, President Trump made another stop on his Great American COVID tour, this time in Pennsylvania at the Pittsburgh International Airport. There was quite a turnout at the airport rally. Take a look at this photo. For any parents watching, if you ran out of Where's Waldo books for your kids during quarantine, just hand them this photo and tell them to find Trump's supporter wearing a mask. <laughs> you got to give Trump credit for one thing. This had to be the first time in history people were excited to spend a Tuesday night at the Pittsburgh airport. <laughs> Trump was on stage for 90 minutes, and I think there were some things he could have skipped, like here when he questioned why Joe Biden always wears a mask. Listen to this. He feels good about the mask, and that's okay. You know what? Whatever makes you feel good, he feels good. He feels good. I mean, honestly, what the hell did he spend all that money on the plastic surgery if he's going to cover it up with a mask? Yeah, according to those closest to him, Trump's never had any work done, nor done any work. <laughs> That's right, Trump made fun of Biden's plastic surgery. Meanwhile, his handling of the virus is about to appear on an episode of Botched. <laughs> By the way, did you see which network was airing the rally? C-SPAN 3. You know your campaign's going well when even C-SPAN 2 says, nah, we're good. <laughs> Meanwhile, in an interview that aired last night on WGN, Trump was asked what single quality he brings to the White House, and here was his response. What single quality is the most important that you bring to the White House? Well, I think I bring an aura that people know I know what I'm doing. I know what is happening. I know where we should be going. I negotiate properly. I understand the military. I understand things uh, as a businessman that other people don't. Just uh, as a person, I understand things. Yeah. Once again, the question was, what single quality? <laughs> Also, just because you're glowing orange doesn't mean you have an aura. <laughs> I have an aura. Orange. That's right, Trump says he knows what he's doing, what is happening, and where he should be going. So good news, once again, he passed concussion protocol. <laughs> Seriously, those are things you say after a trainer gives you smelling salts. Well, guys, we're just six days away from the first presidential debate, and the topics Trump and Biden will be discussing have been announced. Check it out. The moderator, Fox News Chris Wallace, has selected the six topics that will be discussed. The topics include the president's and Biden's records, the Supreme Court, coronavirus, economic policy, racism, and the integrity of the election. It wasn't a good sign when Trump's response was pass, 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 and pass. <laughs> yeah, when Trump heard, he was like, I've got five more topics that I love to talk about. Man, woman, person, <laughs> camera, and TV. Right now, it's just those topics and then the other 50 insane things that'll happen between now and Tuesday. Some more debate news, although this one is about the vice presidential debate. It turns out Pete Buttigieg has been standing in as Mike Pence for Kamala Harris's debate practice. And to really get into the role of Mike Pence, Buttigieg also wears three pairs of Hanes long underwear safety pinned together. Speaking of Mike Pence, yesterday's plane, Air Force Two, was forced to return to New Hampshire after it struck a bird. Actually, when Pence remembered his debate against Kamala is only two weeks away, he started throwing more birds into the engine. He's like, stall, 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 help, stall, please. It's no surprise that birds are attracted to Mike Pence. He's basically the human version of white bread. <laughs> Changing gears here this week, the CDC issued its first guidelines for celebrating Halloween. Listen to this. The CDC released its recommendations for Halloween, and the biggest one is to avoid traditional trick-or-treating this year. The CDC also pointed out that costume masks do not have the same protective power as normal masks. Remember the good old days when all you had to worry about was a giant shiv in your Snickers bar? <laughs> <laughs> the CDC is discouraging trick-or-treating, but to be fair, maybe children shouldn't have been going around collecting candy from strangers anyway. That's right, no trick-or-treating. It's too bad. I'm really going to miss the disappointed look on my kid's face when uh, they get an almond joy. I was fighting that joke. I, I like almond joy. Yeah. Yeah, no trick or treating. Kids will miss getting candy while parents will miss giving that quick, judgy glimpse into their neighbor's house. <laughs> Carpet in the kitchen? 
Very 70s. Uh, yep, the CDC is also discouraging costume parties, mainly so no one has to look at the idiot who dresses up as the coronavirus. <laughs> really funny, Carl. <laughs> Yeah, Halloween will be different. If you see a house covered in cobwebs, those aren't decorations. Those are people who haven't gone outside since March. <laughs> and finally, some sports news. A lot of people are talking about Bill Belichick's sweatshirt from his press conference this morning. Take a look at this thing. <laughs> Gosh, it looks like the Hulk after turning back into Bruce Banner. <laughs> Even crazier, that, that's his wedding tuxedo. <laughs> I think that shirt was also established in 1960. I don't get it. Was he putting out cigarettes on his shoulders? He looks like the centerfold in Divorced Dad Monthly. Remember that photo, because it's what Chris Wallace is going to look like after Tuesday's debate. Uh.